Hello, my name is Brendan Levitt, and this is the second tutorial on honeybee for uh, Grasshopper. In the first tutorial, we covered the basics of starting to set up a simulation, and in this one, we're going to pick up where we left off with the HB zones and uh, cover all the way up to running your first simulation. And for the HB zone, you can see it's uh, the zone that you want to write to an IDF file, which is the uh, basic text file that Energy Plus Simulation Engine takes in. And um, the fastest way is to create a zone with a mass. So this honeybee masses to zones there. Uh, we'll take a BREP and output a zone. So I'm going to come over here and take uh, my BREP there. I'm going to type in BREP here, define it as one, and type, uh, connect that into the zone mass. And out of that, I should, uh, I should get a closed BREP. And if I click, if I uh, show you this, it actually says null. It doesn't say closed BREP. Um, because I still need to um, fill in a few more um, few more uh, fields here. So the other fields, you must name it, give it a, a name. So I'm going to just call it Zone One. And I need to give it a zone program. Actually, I think it. Um, auto automatically defaults to an office, an open office uh, zone program. So let's leave that for now. Um, whether it's conditioned or not, meaning is there is it um, heated or cooled? And I think that defaults to yes, being heated and cooled. Uh, the max roof angle um, is when you have a, a pitched roof. Um, it actually automatically will decide what is a roof, what is a wall, and what is a floor based on orientation. Uh, and so this is a good way of telling it uh, whether you want uh, to input a, whether should consider a tilted surface, a roof or a wall. We'll talk about that a little later. And finally, create the zones is a Boolean toggle, which uh, when true should create the um, zone. So first you can see it, it makes a closed BREP, that's good. The README says that there's no, val no value connected for zone program, and so open office has been selected by de default. It also says it's um, conditioned uh, for that one zone. So now I'm gonna connect this HP zone right into my um, Energy Plus simulation here, and we've now got enough to run a simulation, believe it or not. I didn't consider the windows yet. We'll get to that in a second. Um, for context, it's actually a very similar process as we just did for the zone. Uh, we need to find a context object and then assign a BREP to it. And I think if I double click and type in context, yep, there's Honeybee EP context surfaces. You can connect that to context and then it uh, gives an input for shade surfaces. These can be BREPs. So I'm going to, and um, these can all be. Um, set to be the same, set multiple BREPs. Um, this gives um, an, a way to input a transmittance schedule for the, um, the, the different shading objects. Uh, so for my tree, for instance, I could make that uh, transparent in certain, in certain uh, seasons and opaque in other seasons, um, depending on whether it's deciduous or coniferous. Um, I can also make this um, this overhang come and go seasonally or daily, whatever I want. Right now, I'm going to just have them all be opaque by default. The RAD material is a reference to a whole different set of programs. That's a Radiance, which is a daylighting uh, software engine. Um, phenomenal uh, software. We're not going to touch on it today. Um, the meshing set settings are a way of getting at um, the way that it simplifies geometries, particularly very complex ones like curves. Uh, Energy Plus does not natively handle curves, 
um, or curv curving surfaces. But Honeybee has a really ingenious way of simplifying those curves into uh, planar surfaces, which Energy Plus can read. Um, and then just bounding box is a way of taking, say, a very complex geometry like a circle and just, just using the uh, extreme coordinates of it to make a rectangular solid. For now, we're fine with just our B-reps here connecting to the context, and so we're done. Simulation outputs is the next one here, and if you type in simulation outputs, I, again, I have to go to 9, and honeybee generate EP output. So um, this component right here is going to uh, give me the, the simulation outputs. Energy Plus has the ability to report almost any variable you can think of. Anything that affects the run, you can sort of check up on it. And Honeybee has pre-baked some of these variables. Uh, for now, let's just look at the zone energy use. And so we'll set that to true um, as our only uh, output, just to make this a little simple. And let's see if the report just says that it's generated them successfully. So that's good. Um, we're getting there. So I'm going to move this down. The next set is to write an IDF file, which is the text input file. So if I do that, uh, I'm going to attach a panel to the report here. At least one of the mandatory inputs is missing. And that mandatory input is this write IDF. So if I press true here, it shows you that it is writing uh, the IDF between the hours of 1 to 24, January 1st to 28th of February. Um, it's in meters, and it's writing all of the different libraries, and it's successfully written it to this location. This is the default location, um, and that's it. If you want to change that location, you can change it here in the working directory, and then give your file a specific name so it doesn't keep overwriting it. I highly recommend that you do this. So I'm going to just name this tutorial 01 as my um, base, as the name, and my working directory. I'm going to put in my desktop. I've got this little workshop. I'm going to take that and paste it in as the path for my working directory. So now it, you can see it changes it uh, to the appropriate directory. And you can also be able to see that it automatically just made this Energy Plus folder where it dumped this IDF file. This IDF file is what Energy Plus runs. So if I come over here and now connect my Boolean toggle to run Energy Plus, I can click to true and a pop-up window comes up which runs the file and you'll see it running through the year in this case it's only going to two months so you'll see it go January and then February in a second at least I hope there it goes and voila we have our first energy run I think doesn't usually take this long, so I am a little worried that we did something wrong here. We'll find out in a second. The way to find out if we did something wrong is over here on the right. Um, again, at this report, it, it will output errors. So if you scroll down, you can see it says, done, read below for errors and warnings. This is really important that you do every single time you do a run, uh, because You'll get results um, no matter what, but those results can be completely garbage if you have errors that are meaningful errors. So read down this list always, always. First one says warning. Some missing fields have been filled with defaults. That's okay. Second says warning. Version IDF is 8.1.0, not the same as expected. 8.1.0, that has to do with a typo in the code, which is just fine. Don't worry about that. Um, the next one says warning, manage sizing for a zone sizing run. There must be at least one sizing zone input object. We're not doing sizing, so we don't have to worry about that. That's also related to the next one. 
Um, the, the next warning says, get HT surface data, surfaces with interface to ground found, but no ground temperatures were input. Found first in surface equals zone one, surface zero. So Energy Plus, um, or rather Honeybee, automatically names each one of the um, planes in my zone, each surface. So surface zero is going to be this surface, which is in contact with the z equals zero axis or plane in my geometry. That automatically assumes it's on the ground. And so it assumes it's in ground contact. I'll show you in a bit how to change that. But right now, it's important to note that our um, floor is transmitting heat uh, or receiving heat from the ground. Next one says, determine shadow combinations. There's one surface which is receiving shadows and are non-convex. Uh, we're going to touch on that in a bit. Um, the next, it says shadowing values may be inaccurate. Check the .shd report for more surface shading details. Um, and you'll see that SHD report in um, the, um, in, in here. It, uh, this was, by the way, sorry, that same Energy Plus folder is now populated with a whole string of files. Our original IDF file is here. And there's a whole bunch of other files, including that SHD file that I just um, saw in the warning. Oh, there's some more warnings down here that have to do with uh, report variables that were requested but not generated. Those report variables are the report variables that we requested right here in the simulation outputs when we clicked zone energy use. Um, it's got a lot more in there than we um, have hooked up to the system. So it's looking for a zone package terminal, heat pump, etc., etc., that we don't have hooked up. That is just fine. So what the summary says is there's seven warnings and zero severe errors, and it took 15 seconds to run. That's wonderful. Zero severe errors is excellent and means that probably the data is good. In the next video, we'll talk about how to actually see that data and verify if it really is good. So I will see you on the other side.